We are I. Is the Canada that I knew, is the Canada that I grew up with, was it ever really there? Was it, did it exist? You know, like this is, this is a question that I ask myself all the time, you know, based on the way that things are going in Canada now, is when I was a young man in Southern Alberta, out on the prairies, you know, in the summertime with like the 35, 40 degree, you know, weather just beating down on me in the middle of the field and then waking up the next day and it snowed. You know, where I used to grab my 22 and head out into the field and shoot gophers all day long, target practice for hunting season. And a lot of people who don't understand when you grow up on a farm and you have pasture land, it's a necessity that you shoot these things. There's literally millions of them and all the holes that they dig Horses and cows will get their feet stuck in them, break their leg, and then it's an eye for an eye at that point in time. So it's interesting. I used to roam these lands, you know, as a young man all by myself, whether that be by foot, by bike, by quad, by trike, by go-kart, by vehicle, by tractor, by combine. I used to roam the lands that we called ours. I knew the boundaries of these lands too because it was instilled in me as a very young age that the last thing that you ever think that you have the right to do is go on another man's land. Like, be told here now, boy, the last thing that you want to do is go on that neighbor's land. It's not our land. You respect their land. That is their land. You don't have permission to go on that land. Do not touch that land. Here's these rifles, you know, that you use to be able to provide food for yourself and if absolute necessity, security for yourself and our family as well. Here's this fishing rod to be able to enjoy a beautiful day and put food on the table if necessary. You know, here's these skills to be able to live life that if there's nobody to call or that person that you call is a half day away, is a day away, is a week away, which is a reality sometimes on the farm. You have the skills to be able to do that on your own, or you have the skills to be able to figure that out on your own. Uh Uh-huh, I understand, I understand. When you're driving past somebody on the road, you may not necessarily know exactly that vehicle, but you know, you start to get to know the vehicles around because people don't travel out in that neck of the woods for no reason. You're there for a reason. You know, a gravel road in Southern Alberta is wide enough for two cars to be able to pass themselves, but there's only really, you know, car marks down the center, like wheel wells down the center. But you slow down. You know, you're going 80K on a gravel road and you slow down. You know, you move to your side and you look at that person and you give them a little wave up off the steering wheel. If it happens to be a vehicle that you know, you start to slow down enough because you're going to stop and say hi. See how their day is going and then you continue on your merry way. Son, you got to be polite. This is what you do. This is what you do. You know, you show courtesy. Even if you don't know that person, you show courtesy. Yes, you could drive past them at 80 kilometers an hour. But you slow down to half that, if not less, because that's the courteous thing to do. Okay, I understand. You reap what you sow. The effort that you put in is the effort that you're going to get back. Not only from yourself and from the lands around you, but the people around you as well. What are you willing to do to be able to help these people? So they in return can help you because they want to. These people that are in your life, they want to, but you know, it's a little bit of give and take. You know, if there needs to be water pipe moved at two o'clock in the morning and you can lend a hand, you lend a hand. If you have a 
tractor or a piece of machinery that somebody else doesn't have, you lend a hand. This is what it's like to be able to be a farmer because, again, it's all about creating that community around you. It's all about saving something for the future. You have these granaries and you, you know, you store these seeds because these seeds are your currency. These metal bins that are full of these seeds, that is your currency. You know, like these barns, these wood barns full of seeds. This is also your currency. You sell some now, so you have some money in your pocket, but this is the best part about having a a, ye- a year with a high yield is because you know that those bad years are going to come and you need something to be able to float you through those times. Okay, I understand. More greeneries, the better. More silos, the better. This is something that we need. And as a young man, my father looks at me and says, this is the best scenario I could ask for. We can increase the amount of land that we can farm. Because I now have help. I now have help that I don't necessarily have to pay, but is here to be able to, you know, further the family. Okay, I understand. That's my rule. That's my obligation. I understand how that works. You've gone out into the field and you've planted all these these acres and acres and acres of crops. You know, but when you get home, you also have to tend to your garden because there's all your potatoes and carrots and onions and strawberries and raspberries and radishes and all these things that you know that you need. Okay. Okay. But what do we do with these things? There's also Again, the preparation for the future, there's the, the canning, the jarring, the jamming, the pickling. It's all stuff that has to be done. Because again, it's just like the seeds that are in the granaries. Things are good right now. But what's going to be like when this garden is not in full bloom? Where are we going to get that food then? Same thing with fishing. You know, it's great to be able to spend a day fishing. You know, but you need enough fish so that you can go home and you can feel the freezer because right now you might be able to leave the farm to be able to go fishing. You know, but that day may come, as you know, in the wintertime or it might be a couple weeks because, you know, the blizzard has set in and you can't leave the farm. Where's your food now? So just like the granaries, just like the jamming, just like the jarring, the pickling, You know, you need to prepare, you need to have a freezer full of food because there's going to be a time when you don't have access to that food and you may not just be able to afford it. But the land, if you're willing to be able to take what you need, the land will provide for you. The water will provide for you, the air will provide for you. These are the things that you need. Does that time still exist? Does that simplicity still exist? Do I glorify this because I was a child and actually had no actual responsibility to any of these measures? Yes, I helped. Yes, I contributed. But no, I was not the one who was responsible for these things. But I do know that we were left alone. I don't think I ever saw, ever, you know, a game officer. I never saw a police officer like rare, so rare, you were left alone because there was a code of the land that everybody abided by. And if you think gossip travels fast amongst women in a hair salon now, be the man that fucks over a farmer on the prairies. That word travels faster than any gossip. Social media can't touch the speed at which that word will travel around about your name. And that held everybody to an honest code. That held everybody to ethics and morals that you wanted to live by. Because being ostracized in that community, that was tough, man. You're in for a rough go. You do not want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that your name means something so much that, you know, when you go down to that 
little tiny gas station that happens to be a service station. It's also the post office and a place where you can get a pop and a chocolate bar. And when you write your name in that ledger, because you ask for that credit, that you're going to pay at the end of the month and you do pay at the end of the month, you want that to be worth something. You need it to be worth something. So this is my Canada. This is my Canada where I grew up. This is my Canada for what I want it to be. When I think of the true north, strong and free, when I think of the land of where people, they have accountability to each other because they want that accountability. They want to work hard because that just fills their soul. But they also want to be left the fuck alone because you're an adult. And when adults are left alone to be able to do the right thing, I believe the vast majority of adults will always do the right thing. 